Hi and welcome to Linux and Windows Help. This is episode 9. We're going to be installing Windows with VirtualBox, Windows XP. If you're using just a, you know, a normal computer and you want to install uh, Windows to your computer, you can follow this tutorial as well. Just uh, pop your CD in, reboot. Uh, you have to search on Google to see if, uh, like, to get to your boot menu. So let's say you have a Dell, search uh, Dell boot menu key, which it, for Dell it's F12. Or if any other computer you got, it'll, it'll tell you how to get to the boot menu. And then you just select your CD-ROM drive and it'll boot into your, it's the same thing that we're going to be doing. But well, we're going to be using VirtualBox on this. You see I already got, this is my main one I use. This is just one I made for the uh, demonstration. I didn't activate it yet. But uh, I'm not going to activate it, I'm just going to delete it. So, I'm going to show you how to create one real quick. We're gonna. I'm gonna name it Windows XP3, but you know you can just name yours normal Windows XP. Make sure the type is Windows Microsoft Windows. Version is Windows XP 32-bit. Nice. Give yourself a good amount of RAM. Depending on you know how much RAM you got in your computer. Click, hit create. Next. Next. Eh, give yourself enough size. This is your for your hard drive. So you want to give yourself a you know pretty good size, just so you can install things. And you know you don't need that much. You know for Windows, and you, know, you could you, you could do fine with that. You know you can install a few programs, but if you want to install quite a bit of stuff, you know give yourself a fair amount. That's it. You got it created. Uh, put on the storage. You make sure you have your Windows uh, XP CD and CD-ROM drive empty. Go ahead and um, select your DVD-ROM drive. So you just select right here, and your DVD, that's your normal DVD-ROM drive or whatever your CD-ROM. Okay. Then you go down to Network. You can leave it as NAT if you want, but I'm going to be using the bridge so we can put a uh, shared folder in there. If you don't need a shared folder, then don't worry about it. You can use it just regular NAT. And done. All right, go ahead and hit start and power it up. I already got one running for us. You don't need that one. All right, once you hit start, you're going to um, come to this screen. Just press enter, or if you want to repair it, hit R. Just press enter. Type, press the F8 key on your keyboard. It means you agree to their using their crappy software. Unpartition space. Sent, hit enter. Unless you want to like um, to create a petition, like another petition or another drive, whatever you want to do. If you want to do that, you can. Just press enter for this tutorial though. Format the petition using the NTF file system. And hit enter. And then it'll format your drive. And I'll copy your files. Then it'll reboot. It's rebooting. And then it'll start uh, fin finalizing the installation. Come up to here and hit next. Type your name. I put VirusFest because it, it likes Windows likes to get a lot of viruses. And crash on you. Then type your product key. I'm not going to put my product key on there because that would be piracy. It's, just, uh, it's located usually on the bottom of your computer or on the side. Or if you got a, like a, a pamphlet that when you bought it, if you bought the actual XP, it would be like in a pamphlet. Just type your key and hit next. And then you can change your name here. Or you can just leave it default and hit next. Choose your time zone, hit next. It's fine, hit next. Explore your creative side with photos. Oh, here's a little joke for uh, from Microsoft. Your computer will be faster and more reliable. <laughs> Such comedians, Microsoft. Such comedians. 
Oh, here's another joke. Surfing the internet, safe, fast, and flexible. And if you call it having a thousand viruses, flexible, I guess. It's like a yoga instructor. Rely on Windows for de dependable home computing. Yep, another joke. You can't rely on Windows for five minutes. And then you go to here. It's booting in. To improve the appearance, hit OK. Hit OK again. Microsoft Windows XP. Welcome to Microsoft Windows. And this is also really good music. You can start hearing some really good music here. So just, uh, I always like that, that song, the little tune they play. Hit next, or turn down your volume. Sit not right now. I'm not over. This, this computer will connect to a local area network or home network. Hit next. Put no remind me every few days. Uh, it doesn't do it right here because for some reason it doesn't it just doesn't work. So put no remind me every few days. Type your name if you want any other additional users. You can type them here or create them later if you want. Hit next. Congratulations. Here's what you accomplished. Install our crappy software. Finish. Then it will start booting into it. All right. Once it goes from here, it'll go to here. These will be missing from there. You can add them anytime you want. Uh, you just right click and go to uh, properties, and you can just make sure those are on there. Because usually they're not there. When you first install it, uh, you can't go into full screen mode because it all it shows is this size of the screen right here. It won't go any bigger. There'll be a black border, and it just won't show it. And then scaled mode is about the only thing you can do. You can scale it. It don't do good. So uh, you want to install something called Guest Editions. It's with Fire or it's a uh, with VirtualBox. Okay. Keep on reminding me I don't like Windows. See VirtualBox Guest Editions. To install that, go to Devices and hit hit Insert Guest Edition CD Image, and it'll automatically download it and run it from here. So it's actually running in the Windows. It's not running in Linux. It's running in Windows, and it just installs proper drivers and stuff to work with VirtualBox. And plus, you can share files with it, so you definitely need it. I'm going to cancel it because I already got it installed right here. Now you can see it can go into full screen mode. See? You got this little down here, though. But it operates just the same, you know. You got full control, just like a normal Windows XP machine. Go ahead and... I'm going to pull it down for us. Alright, after you do that, open up your terminal on Linux. And you got to install something called Samba. I already got it installed, but sudo apt-get install Samba. I already got it installed. Samba's already the newest version. That will enable you to share a folder. So go ahead and right click, create new folder. You can put it anywhere you want. You don't have to put it on your desktop. But I'm going to put it right here. Shared. I'm going to right click on it. Go to sharing options. Share this folder. Boom, boom. Create. All right, and I'm going to go down to permissions, or properties, permissions, and I'm going to do all this. Alright, now we got a good shared folder. And you gotta go to your network places. Nah, where's that at? Is it? That don't come up that easy. 
Well, sometimes it does, but it don't always come up that easy. If it if it doesn't come up here, you gotta go to search. It, like I said, it don't usually come up that easy. That's surprising. I'm gonna go ahead and. Create shortcut. So it'll be created on the desktop. It's supposed to be created on the desktop. And I don't know why it's not working, but say like uh, it doesn't show up. You gotta search for your computer. See, this is a the computer is Danny HP laptop. Yours would be different. So you start sanding HP laptop and search, and that's a shared folder we created. And right click, create shortcut. Yes, work this time. There we go. All right, let's go and rename it from all that mumbo jumbo to shared. The same as what you got on your desktop. So, like, um, when you first install Windows XP, it comes with Internet Explorer. Only problem is websites don't like Internet Explorer. You'll, you'll actually think your internet's working, but like, see, your internet's working here. Your internet is actually working. It's just that websites don't support it anymore. So you'll if you go to something else, you're like, why are you not working? Why are you not working? I got a connection problem. But it actually is working. It's just that that server is blocking Internet Explorer because it's outdated. So that's the reason why we care to create a shared folder. Go to Firefox or Mozilla.org, or you can just search for Firefox download, and it'll be like the first link. Now comes this page. This is loading off your Linux desktop, and so it says you were using the latest version of. Uh, yeah, I know. Click I want want a fresh copy, and scroll down the Windows version, not the 64, the 32-bit Windows. You want to scroll to the top, Windows. And you gotta go down to your language. I speak out of English. You notice that's all greened out. So go ahead and click download. And you'll download your. Uh, ah. So we're supposed to record our videos right now. And it'll download this right here. So now we got a shared folder. Just drop this baby in. And we'll go back to our Windows and our shared folder. It's there. It won't run from here for some reason. This cause just go ahead and just drag it and copy it back to your Windows. But it it won't run from there. I guess it's because it's a shared folder. It won't run from there. It's kinda odd though, it should still run from there. It says permissions not accepted or something. Don't no big deal. Just copy it over here and go ahead and run your Firefox. Do wait while it's being installed. That's pretty much guys. That's pretty much it. You install Firefox and then you install your um, your antivirus software. You install your firewall software if you want to use a firewall. You don't need it. That's pretty much it. There's one more thing I want to show you, which makes uh, running the virtual machine really nice. Um, you don't need to be connected to all that junk. Yeah. 
Not necessarily. Do you see it's all working? Come on. Ah. I was going to load Google again. Come on, Firefox. Load the same page that said that cannot connect to. And it very well can connect now. So if you first install it and you think your internet's not working because Internet Explorer's not working, that's because websites don't allow it anymore. All right, we're gonna go ahead and power this off. We don't need it. Actually, no. I'm gonna do a demonstration. I'm gonna um, pretend. No, I can't do that right now. Hang on. I'm gonna back it up first. Go ahead and delete it. to virtual box of VMs. I'm just gonna make a directory here, create a folder, virtual box backup. Okay. This is the one we just made. Right click on it. Hit copy. And go back to your backup. And paste. Make sure it backs up. That is a backup, backup of what you're using right now. So basically, everything that this Windows is using right now is using that backup. So everything, the Firefox will be on there, the guest editions will be on there. Everything will be the, exactly the same. And if you go ahead and activate it, it will always be activated. Back up. Okay, let's say you get a virus. Name it. This is a virus. Okay. The computer just got infected with a virus. Your Windows has a virus. We're going to go ahead and shut it off. So we got the, this is where your virtual box is stored. We're going to go ahead and just delete that. And go back to your backup. Copy it. Go to virtual box EMs. Paste it. Let it copy your backup. This is probably the most important part of this whole entire video. That's what we're showing you now. You never have to format again. Your Windows XP. Just make sure you always have a good backup of it. A backup of your drive. I already have it running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and start again. Hopefully it doesn't kill the video. Sometimes when XP starts, it knocks out my simple screen recorder. I'm just praying it don't. We no longer have the virus on the computer. That text file we created is gone.
I'm sure it's not in the recycle bin. That's something that, that's when we was doing something else. Or that's something I did earlier. Yeah, I need that's not it. That's something I did earlier. And that's uh, pretty much it. It's a good way to back up your um, OS. So if you ever get a virus, it takes two seconds to restore it. Two, or not, more like 30 seconds. To delete them, copy them back over, and then reboot. And it'll all work again. Alright, thank you for watching this episode. Please like, please share the video. Uh, this tutorial will actually, you know, it'll help you like install Windows 7. It's pretty much the same thing. You pop the CD in and reboot. I've never, I don't even own a copy of Windows 7, so maybe sometime I might have a copy of Windows 7 that I can do a tutorial on that as well. But I don't have uh, Windows 7. Anyways, thank you for watching.